Jennifer Lyle, thank you so much for being on the Positioning to Profit podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you. Before we hit the live button, we were talking about this topic of energy. And so I'm particularly excited to have you on because this is something that all of us that are listening, that have a business, that are an entrepreneur, you deserve this time to really be present and focus what on what Jennifer is going to share because they will impact your business if you let it. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited and delighted for the magic we're going to create in this conversation. Likewise. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you've been doing this with your spiritual gifts. I, I remember we talked, I think it was last week, and you said, oh, ever since I was a little girl, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. But you've really put it to the forefront as part of your business since 2010. So can you share a little bit about your background and how you got to this identification, you went to school, right? You got the degree, you had this corporate life and all that. And why, like what called you to transition and what has life been like since then? Great question. So my background in corporate was in marketing and event planning and I had little kids. So I didn't want to go back into downtown Toronto and the days were just going to be way too long. So I started working in some other areas still in event planning, but event planning is really long days and that's difficult with young kids and so i came to this point where i decided that i wanted to have my own business to have that balance the this mythical balance <laughs> that they talk about for business that isn't really there so i started a video podcast back in 2008 and that was the forefront of my business and my intention was to monetize that and the focus of the conversations were around how to be proactive about your wellness. I co-hosted the podcast with a naturopathic doctor. I was just a mom who was passionate about wellness at that time. And it didn't work out the way I thought it was going to, which was really hard with my smarty pants brain, being an honor student. I didn't realize how challenging things were as an entrepreneur that you have to do it all. And I tried that for a little while and I didn't believe in myself. I didn't know why anybody would want to buy advertising. So of course, at this point, painting the picture 2008, thinking about podcasting being at its infancy, yeah. uh, the wellness world, just building momentum. The 2008 is also when the recession was on and I just had a hard time doing the sales and the reach outs and it's like, all right, what else can I do with the gifts that I have? So how about corporate wellness? Because I had the event planning and the passion for wellness and I can do something around this. And I got a handful of clients, but because it was the, the recession, it just wasn't coming together. I'd be knocking on doors and there'd be for lease signs, there'd be no receptionist. And I came to this place where I was just beating myself up for the results that I was getting. I was expecting full-time results when really I was working part-time because my kids were still really little. But I came to this place where I just gave myself permission to figure out what made my heart sing. And that's when the spiritual wonderland opened up for me. And I discovered dowsing and meditation and crystals and oracle cards and automatic writing. And it was through the automatic writing that I received my own modality called Connect to You. And the intention of that work is to connect the soul, the heart, and mind. And I came to realize like that me receiving that was a stick drawing, wiggly lines, say an affirmation here, <laughs> say a prayer there. And through the automatic writing, getting this framework and the universe saying, go do a case study. And so I was just following the motions and I came to realize that I had actually been working with energy since I was four years old. I was a family massage therapist and just the transformation that I started to see as I was working with people like Reiki masters and people who were way more knowledgeable than I was at the time. And the results that they were seeing was just incredible. And I was just tapping into something that was innately inside of me that I hadn't claimed or been aware of. Oh, that's so beautiful. I think the things that I'm hearing about this is that a, I completely believe that when you're an entrepreneur, there's things that it's, a, it's an iterative process before you hone in on this is it. 
right? So show yourself some grace if you're listening to this and say, I don't know if this is the right place. I've been hearing a lot of that lately, just people feeling like they want to change or pivot or the transition, or should I do this and should I do that? And so by utilizing these types of skills that you work with your clients on, Jennifer, it's how they get to further clarity. And I love the topic of what we're talking about today is the energy of being seen, because this is true of a lot of clients. I know I have experienced the same. It's these things where we get into our heads. I actually really love that you said I was getting, I was expecting full-time results from part-time work right? It's having those honest conversations with yourself in order to level set and understand where you're playing from. And I see this a whole lot, especially in my interpretation through my experience, women over 40, especially if you're a Gen X or and above, you have this thing about, I hate video. <clears throat> I hate social media. I don't want to be seen for whatever the reasons are. And so that in essence, what, before we hit the go light button, you said, this is causing an energetic block. It's holding you back from the vision. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. So can you explain a little bit about that? Just the reality of what you're facing when you're putting those, maybe it's an inverted, it's an inverted that we put these barriers up that we're not even aware of that are actually compromising the vision that we have. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's all unconscious. And just as you said, people just blurt out, I can't do that. I can go and speak in front of a group of live of 500 people, but put me in front of a camera. No way. No, I can't do it. And I've been having that conversation with women recently as well. And they're like, I don't understand. They, they don't understand it themselves, but they can feel it. And like, I've got to move this. And these are people who are saying yes to letting it go. So three things that come up predominantly. One, there are stories from the past that are telling them of all the reasons why they're not good enough, why they shouldn't be a voice out there, why they shouldn't be heard, why they shouldn't be seen. It could be something as simple as maybe their dad worked shift work and their mom would always say, shh, be quiet, be quiet. Don't wake your father up. So you didn't want to be noisy and out there and have your voice being oh, heard yeah. because you didn't want to get in trouble from dad because, and your mom was fearful because she didn't want to see his wrath either. So there can be stories like that come up that you might be able to put together in your mind with the energetics that I work with. There's something called epigenetics. And just like how DNA is passed down through generations, energetic patterns are passed down through generations as well. So there can be things from other lifetimes that are stopping you. Then there are your own vows and promises of things that you've said, but you don't realize that it's like cricket ching, like in my head, I'm hearing like this lock and key, ah, you've solidified that and put up these barriers to things. So let's say in grade three, you stood up to do a speech contest and they were videotaping it or somebody was videotaping you at the same time and then you accidentally fell off the stage or something went sideways and everybody laughed at you and then you're like i swear to god i'm never going to do that ever again and we don't realize that's registered in our unconscious mind and it's like all right yeah, I'm never going to make you go there again, honey. Don't you worry. I've got you. Every time you go to do something like that, then it's just, no, pull back from the yeah, edge. Yeah, it's so natural, especially if you're saying it was a feeling and conviction. Yes. When in that moment of what happened, it's like you're locking that in. Yes. And that's the thing. Like, I'm so glad that you brought that part up. It's that feeling with that experience really locks that in in energetically in your unconscious mind and your physical body you can go right back to that feeling of it in that moment and we don't realize just how anchored it is in there but it can be released it can be once you start to become aware of it you start to be able to undo it you have a choice and you can then create new evidence 
doing that live. Maybe you do a joint live with a friend <laughs> to have it break the ice, but you're creating this new evidence in your mind to let your mind know it's safe to go here. I'm not going to tolerate that limitation anymore. I'm not that child. I'm not that person anymore. This is what's calling me forward. So in essence, what you're saying, just to play back what I'm hearing is the first thing for those of you that are listening to this is just to have that awareness. Ask, I, I call it asking yourself better questions okay. instead of why does this happen to me? Or why am I feeling right? Like, why do I hate this so much? It's what's causing me to feel this that I feel constricted or that I'm holding myself back. You know, when you're holding yourself back because mm -hmm. we're feeling incongruent, we're feeling like this really sucks. You're not supposed to feel that way. So if you're feeling that way, it's because something's going on that is that you are miscreating. And mm -hmm. so the idea there, based on what you're saying is it's creating the awareness, being aware and then what you're saying is creating those situations where you have that evidence. Can you give some tips around that? Like just how do you create the, that, that evidence that you talked about? For the new ways of being? Yes. The first step, as we're talking about, is that awareness. And once you are aware of the pattern showing up, then you now have choice. Mm. So it doesn't seem quite as scary. It's right. like staring down the barrel of a gun, but knowing that the gun really isn't loaded. And so then it is about taking that action anyways, dipping your toe in some gentle way so that you can start to prove to your subconscious mind that it's safe for you to be seen. So whether it's like jointly doing that live or even just setting the date in your calendar that you're going to do it, buying the equipment <laughs> to just say, see, that wasn't quite so scary. Yeah. And just starting to take the action. So a small baby step just to, so you don't want to do like a big TV interview or something like that, perhaps for your first go around, but something small to dip your toes in just for your body to see that you are safe and to journal through it too, so that you're coaching yourself through that process, having an inner dialogue with, okay, so I'm feeling that feels in my body and maybe talking through, okay, yeah, all right, I see you, you're that seven-year-old me or you're that 20-year-old me or whatever. Okay, let's breathe through that, you're safe, you're safe. So the other strategy that's really significant here is to ensure that you are in what I call a thriving state. So I'm on a mission to teach a million people how to check their inner battery as often as they check their phone battery. And just like when you have your phone battery getting into that red zone, you're like, ah, I need to plug in. Otherwise yes. things start to not work so great. So the same thing, if you are in this depleted zone where you are in this survival. So through this process, I invite people to check in to see how they're feeling physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually on a scale of one to 10. Mm -hmm. When you're a one to four, you're in survival. Five, six, or seven, you're suffering. Eight, nine, 10, you're thriving. When you take action from that eight, nine, or 10, that full inner battery state, things get easier. It's easier to say, all right, I feel the feels, I'm doing it anyways. And the scariness level gets shrunk down. You have that confidence of, I can do this. So that's another significant part of it. I love it. I love it. And then to talk about how maybe we're not even aware of these self-sabotaging behaviors and how they hold us back from the vision. I love how you're tying that together because I always think if all of us and so many occasions I'll speak to entrepreneurs to say, I have this idea. It's like, and they get scared of even saying the idea that they have. And I was like, if you, if this idea is coming through you, it's because it's calling upon you to bring it to light, right? It's calling up upon you to manifest it. And so you can't create that flow to fruition if you're creating these blocks. So can you talk about how this ties into that. The blocks in these things that you're holding you back and the things the things that are causing the resistance are compromising the vision of what you want to achieve. So the resistance shows up when you're going and taking action in these new areas and makes you feel really uncomfortable. But what the resistance really is that stuck energy. Because, you know, the idea of you pick up a phone as a camera and you do a live video really isn't that big of a deal. It's all of the story and attachment that goes along with it. So what's happening is you're showing up as the old version of you as you're trying to take that action. And as long as you try to take action from that state, you're going to keep spinning your wheels. 
you have to boost your energy, be an energetic match for that beautiful, bold vision of what it is that you're stepping towards and take action from that energetic state. And it's the combination of the elevated energy, releasing the energetic ties to the old ways of being. Now, for me, what I take my clients through is different ways of clearing energy using sound, using visualization, using intention, and we'll clear energy like that. Other tools that people can reach for could be screen therapy. What's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff out? Boxing. It could be journaling. Like there are lots of different methodologies. For me, I use a lot of visualization and creating sacred space to elevate the soul so that they're able to have those energetic ties disintegrate. And you still have to be aware because when you are immersed in situations that are similar to where it was in the past, if you're sunk down into that survival mode again, then yeah. it's like you get locked back into the old ways of being. It's about energy management to ensure that you're still consistently showing up as the version of you that you're stepping into and that oh, takes beautiful discipline and the yeah. head games right everything goes on in your head i love that can you talk about obviously without naming names for the client's protection and privacy maybe a story of somebody who was really resistant and not even realizing we're in the jar we don't see <laughs> ourselves from the outside and so how they were able to apply what it is that you guide people through so that they can see that bigger vision and then bringing that the vision to life the client that comes to my heart is an incredible woman. She has a phenomenal business, but she was so tangled up in the old family dynamics. She has a European descent and there tends to be a lot of energy drama that gets brought up into the relationships and everything to be. And as we started to dismantle some of those patterns and she started to check her inner battery on a regular basis, she was able to see, oh, look, I'm responding just like my mom. Look, that pattern's coming up and that's triggering this in my partner. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that I just said those words. That's the exact way that my father used to talk to me and I'm talking to my employees like that. And as she started to make the correlation between how she was feeling in her battery, and how she was behaving she realized that she was spewing energetic gunk all over people in her day all the time and it was also compromising her own happiness because she would stew in the thoughts of ah that happened that happened and being really cranky so as we started to apply more of her energetic awareness and she started to be more disciplined in taking care of herself she came to this one pivotal moment of where she had this day where she had three really big situations show up. Now, normally one of those showing up would send her sideways for weeks, just complaining about it, stewing in it, rah, replaying it in her mind. But she was able to move through these three big situations. And even, I'm not gonna lie, she did cry <laughs> there was a lot going on that day, but she cried, she purged, she got it out and whoosh, came back into her truth and was able to navigate through a rather deceiving situation, trusting in herself and in her intuition, being confident. And then at the end of the day, she's, oh my goodness, like, I, I made it through that. I made it through that. And seeing how she can navigate through really tough situations just opened up what's possible for her and her business and how she wants to go to the next next stage for her now for her she's actually focused on closing that business and starting a new one so now she's opening up her mind to the possibilities for ooh, i can see how this is changing me i wonder how i can consult for other businesses that are in the same industry for how leaders can step up take the wisdom and expertise from what she knows within the business, but also what she now knows in leadership. Isn't that amazing how by taking care of that work, doing the work, and then you come to the awareness that there's so much more, it's so much more expansive when you get rid of those blocks and the things that are holding you down. And ease, and there's an ease. ease to it. 
Wow. I just got chills. That's so true. Uh, It's like, we make it so much harder on ourselves than it needs to be. I know. I trust me. I know (laughs) it. I come from a place of knowing it's like all of these constricted, like forceful, like just going against the very flow of the positivity of creating things with ease. And so, so I'm saying this because there's so many times people that I talk to, they're in their own way. They're creating the constricted energy. They're creating the blocks, all of the heaviness. Mm -hmm. And even in, in the, in, in the realm of making decisions, I'm like, how does it feel to you? Does it feel heavy? Cause that it should tell you everything of where you're not supposed to be. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so I know that this comes back to what you really focus on as well as you work with your clients and for you yourself as a leader is we tend to get caught up in that how, but it all starts with the B. Oh, I love, yep, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, innately people are, I'm like, hold the how, hold the how, don't be, it's not time for the how yet. (laughs) But in all fairness, it's if you don't have the guidance of somebody like you, people are not going to know. It's like, we don't know our blind spots. And so you have a program that's coming up. Can you talk a little bit about that? It is so delicious. It's called Ready to Be Seen. And it is a really intense incubator that's so delicious where we release the top blocks that hold entrepreneurs back over three weeks. And so it really is about you receiving and releasing and taking bold action in your business. So I'm not adding new to do's for you. It's about you following through on those things that have been on your to do list for forever. And as you peel back the layers, it's something fascinating that by the third session, it's like we peeled back enough that there's this bulk, a blip in the momentum. And people have had such incredible shifts in their business like it's ranged from people multiplying their income one person made her monthly income in a week another person had her kids home sick all the kids were home sick her husband had just gone back into the office and she still worked from home and even though she had less time because she wasn't pushing against the resistance of rah 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 she still had one of her highest revenue months And others who have been in this crossroads place where they finally have the clarity of, I know what's next. They are releasing that old identity, all these old stories, all the old judgments, all the different types of worries and the confusion, the overwhelm. You come to this place of space where you're you at your true potential and it's the way forward. And it's for three weeks. So really action packed. And at the same time, punchy because three weeks. Wow. It is intense. We are doing, we're doing two energy clearings per week. So there's the live cohort. And then there's also a self-study version where you go through yourself, but the pace still is over three weeks because why do we need to drag things out? And that's what people really love about this program, that it's short, it's quick, they get the results and then they move on because sometimes we can get ourselves into such a funk. And why sit and stew in it for weeks or months? Let's get through it. And as you just start to clear the energy and because you're encouraged to take action between the sessions, and it doesn't matter if it's in your personal life or in your, your professional life, it doesn't matter where the action takes place. What you're doing is we're clearing away those subconscious blocks, those energetic blocks, those old patterns. We're creating new neural pathways of evidence of it is safe for you to be in action. It is safe for you to do this. And people say all the time, oh my gosh, I don't understand why I was spinning my wheels on this for the last three weeks. And then we go through a session and now it's just so clear and I do it and it's done. Love it. Love it. And so that's starting soon as part of the show, you're going to see in the show notes, the link, but do you have a quick link or should people go to the show notes page? J-L-Y-A-L-L.com forward slash ready, R-E-A-D-Y. Okay. So J-L-Y-A-L-L, it's the first letter of her first name, Jennifer, last name, Lyle, L-Y-A-L-L.com forward slash ready. Ready. I'm ready to be seen. Ready. I'm ready to be seen. I love it. So we'll also have it in the show notes. Definitely check that out because imagine what it would look like if you could take care of those blocks and move past them. And the way you make it sound, it's yeah, you just move past it. And I love that it's swift and quick and easy. And let's just get it done. Yes. It's so good. It's so good. And I the love it. Yeah, the community is so good. 
It sounds like you've been doing it for quite a while now. So it's been a successful track for people to get into your world. Oh, yes. It's been phenomenal. This is the 12th launch. I've led about 20 groups now through the process, seven different countries. It's wow. every single time. It just. It fills you. It fills your cup. Yeah. It's <laughs> so good. Beyond words. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So again, that'll be in the show notes. Okay. So let's transition to the fast five questions where I ask you five questions in no particular order. You answer organically, truthfully, authentically. Are you ready? Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, Jennifer, let's do this. Number one, what would make this a great year for you? Oh my gosh. My book is published. My facilitator training is complete and there are dozens of people waiting and eagerly going through the program for learning how to check your inner battery. Oh, I love that. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Huge. Number two, what would you consider your greatest achievement so far? Oh, my greatest achievement so far is listening to my soul, listening to my intuition, learning that skill. And how that is it. That's the <sighs> true North. Number three, person, place, or a thing. What is one thing that inspires you greatly? Nature. Just sitting still watching, witnessing the messages, the teachers, whether it's the wind, the nuances, oh, so much to learn there. Number four, what is one thing that you wish somebody would have told you when you first started your entrepreneurial journey? Let it be easy. Yeah. The whole story of hard work is really ingrained in me and in my family and yeah, let it be easy. It's actually, no, let me rephrase it. It's okay for it to be easy. It's okay for it to be easy. There you go. Yeah. And number five, last question. After all is said and done, Jennifer, what do you want your legacy to be? Teaching a million plus people how to check their inner battery and having that continuing on for forever, for whatever evolves after batteries. Lots of ripple yeah. effect of that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yes. All right. And then how do people get in touch with you for your main website or on socials? What's the best way to connect with you, Jennifer? Yeah. All my socials are linked through my main website. So com. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. So appreciate that. And really opening our eyes to what's possible when you let go of all the noise, get into a space of you deserve to remove the blocks. You deserve to see these ideas come to life. I always say if it's coming through you, it's because it's meant to manifest. So these are things and working with people like Jennifer is going to help get you there. So thank you so much for being on the show. So appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity.